Chương trình này được bảo trợ bởi Family Joy tổ ấm y tế của mọi gia đình 714-898-0765 Hi, welcome to the OC Health and Education Show on Little Saigon TV. I'm your host, Julie Yip. To us, OC stands for our community because we believe that our community thrives when we come together. May is Better Speech and Hearing Month. This is a month for us to celebrate our ability to communicate and each other and also to learn more about the field and how we can self-advocate. And on our show today, I have invited Colin Hubbard. He is a clinical director at OC Autism, here to talk about the field and his journey in becoming a speech-language pathologist. Julie Yip kính chào quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV trong chương trình kiến thức y khoa gia đình và xã hội. Chương trình OC Health and Education là chương trình song ngữ. Julie, cảm ơn quý vị đã theo dõi chương trình mỗi thứ ba lúc 7 giờ tối và sáng thứ tư. Hôm nay, Julie sẽ nói về đề tài của Better Speech and Hearing Month, đó là tháng 5. Hy vọng mình có thời gian hiểu thêm về nghề của Julie, đó là người ông ngữ trị liệu. Thêm nữa làm sao mình được um, làm trong cái nghề, nghề đây và hiểu thêm làm sao mình uh, lấy cái um, giấy giới thiệu cho bác sĩ gửi cho mình, cho con của mình được học cái chương trình của Speech Therapy. Hơn cái người um, trong gia đình của mình có bị tai biến cũng còn Speech Therapy. Uh, trước nhất, Julie muốn giới thiệu cho quý vị Colin Hubbard, Colin Hubbard là một người clinical director của OC Autism, nói về cái đề tài của Better Speech and Hearing Communication. Colin, welcome to the show. Hello, Julie. Thank you for having me and thank you for finally convincing me to come on live TV. I dare say this is the first time. <laughs> you know, I know it's hard because, you know, when you, you're a speech pathologist, you're so focused on helping the children, helping some of our patients who have strokes and brain injury. and Coming on TV is not usually part of our job and our training. Tell me a little bit about what you do as a clinical director and how do you help the community in, in, in uh, learning about uh, speech and hearing? As a full-time speech language pathologist and clinical director at OC Autism, I help with meeting with the patients and their families, making sure that the goal, they're meeting their goals, checking on the progress, helping the other staff with talking with the families and advocating for the family's needs. Now, do you for speech therapy, for those of, that are watching, they might not know what kind of patients we help. Is it children that you work with and adults? And what kind of disorders do they come with? Contrary to misconceptions, we don't just work with children. We also work with adults, so even geriatric population. Um, for children, we're helping with you know early identification, helping detect what disorders they may have, whether it be communication or other difficulties for their geriatric population. They may have had brain injuries, so it's helping them with strokes they may have had, or in, even in case of veterans having gone through war conflicts. Yes, you know, because when, when you hear the word speech therapy, it doesn't really explain exactly what we do. So I'm hoping to explain that in Vietnamese so hopefully the audience can follow through with us. Uh, speech therapy là một ngành ngành nghề đó là âm ngữ trị liệu. Julie là một người speech language pathologist làm trong nghề cũng 25 năm rồi. Và đây là một cái show là Julie thấy là quan trọng nhất là trong nghề nghiệp của mình á, mình giúp cho mỗi người hiểu về uh, cái quan trọng là cái cái kỹ năng giao tiếp và nhai nước thức ăn và cũng đó đó một cái nhiều lúc á, là cái bị tâm bệnh nhiều người nghĩ đó là speech therapy là chỉ chỉnh chỉnh về âm thanh cho nói rõ không mà thiệt ra mấy em mà chậm phát triển thì mình giúp về ngôn ngữ phát triển ngôn ngữ mấy em bị tự kỷ thì mình chỉnh hành vi để làm sao để cho em không có bị giận dữ nữa mà biết sử dụng cái chữ để cho nói chuyện à, nhiều bé cũng có có khó khăn ăn uống họ kén ăn thì lúc đó mình cũng phải có nhiều cái phương pháp dạy Um, chừng nào mình có người um, người người lớn trong nhà bị tai biến hay bị tai nạn xe thì hay, hay bị bệnh tâm bệnh cũng là speech therapy cũng giúp bệnh nhân mình thấy đó là mình phải luyện lại cho bệnh nhân có cái thể ăn uống lại tại mình th mình nhiều lúc đó, mình thấy là bác sĩ gia đình không có biết lúc nào giới thiệu cho speech therapy so hy vọng hôm nay Julie uh, sẽ um, chia sẻ về đề tài của speech therapy để cho giúp cho quý vị uh, hiểu thêm now Colin I know um, being a speech therapist is a really hard journey. We have to get a master's degree and a lot of times get into graduate school because it requires us to have a master's degree to do what we do. Um, we have to have 3.8 and above. I know when I was in college, I didn't have a 3.8. 
So given in today's standards, it would probably be hard for me to get in there. Now, did you do well academically and how did you um, get into grad school to become a speech pathologist? No, I also struggled with academics and so forth. So I made sure to find ways to volunteer after finding out about the field. I volunteered at OC Autism. I started out helping out as the monkey at Austin. <laughs> Uh, now, you know, mascot. when you say the monkey, like for, a lot of people don't understand that OC Autism has a monkey mascot. And this is to also raise awareness with autism. So, you know, you've gone a long way, come a long way from being a monkey. We used to pay you with bananas. Now you get a real paycheck, right? Right. <laughs> so tell me what, what that was like as far as what degrees you had. Where did you go to school? Um, I started the field first going to Cal State Fullerton. Um, about 10 years ago. Okay. Went there, did undergraduate program, and during part of the time I was there, not only volunteering, but also going to a local community college. Okay. And getting an associate's degree so that I could have also hands-on experience working in the field. Because I think a lot of people don't understand that in order to do provide speech therapy, there's two options. One option is to be in a speech assistant, which is a, a minimum of an associate's degree or either locally at Orange Coast College or Santa Ana College. Right. But a lot of times, you know, students or, or employees who come and uh, enroll or an interview with me, they oftentimes have a bachelor's degree. So that's what you got. You got a bachelor's degree from Fullerton. Now, your journey to getting a master's degree, what, how did you get past that hurdle? And what, what motivated you or what made you successful? Other than volunteering, um, for me, I'm very religious, so my faith, I am very much believe that God helped me through it. You know, oh. our Lord helped me, His Blessed Mother helped me through prayers and lots of pushing hard. I was able to, thanks be to God, get into grad school. I still remember getting the email I had less than a week to decide to accept or not. I'm very glad I did. Well, you know, like, like I said, I'm so happy that you came back to OC Autism and now helping so many patients each week. Because I know we, we see hundreds of patients each week and we have a team to do that. So thank you so much for being a part of that team and making sure that we help more families in, in, in the process. Um, thưa quý vị khán giả, hôm nay mình có thời gian nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard. Colin Hubbard là một người âm ngữ trị liệu đó là speech language pathologist uh, mà cũng là một người clinical director. Mình làm um, clinical director là phải oversee rất nhiều người mà nhân viên khác mà làm trong nghề đây. Uh, giống như Julie nói đó là chừng nào mình muốn provide speech therapy cho mấy em bị tự kỷ hoặc mấy ông bà bị tai biến mạch máu não thì bắt buộc ít nhất phải có bằng uh, associate degree ở trường OCC có cái cái chương trình um, cái chương trình ở Santa Ana College cũng có một cái chương trình về associate degree đó là cái người phụ làm cho cái người âm ngữ trị liệu thêm nữa chừng nào mình muốn làm cái speech language pathologist là định bệnh về viết viết to hay viết viết công việc là về về cái bài học đó, là mình phải có bằng master trong nghề speech therapy rất có nhiều người muốn học cái nghề speech therapy uh, locally ở, ở quận cam của mình đó, thì học ở trường Cal State Fullerton hoặc trường Cal State Long Beach mà trường nào mình muốn vô nghề có bằng master đó phải có 3.8 điểm hoặc cao hơn mới được vô em nào mà không có cái điểm đủ điểm để cho vô học đại học mà graduate school thì có nhiều em tới volunteer cho cho OC autism hoặc volunteer cho cái um, um, trung tâm phi lợi nhuận khác để cho mình có cái nhiều cái kinh nghiệm thì chưa lấy thấy đó là giống như Colin nói đó là um, Colin có cái kinh nghiệm làm việc đó thì có thể mình viết trong cái letter of recommendation đó, thì giúp cho mấy học sinh vô uh, chưa lấy thấy là trong nghề nghiệp của mình là, là speech language pathologist mà cũng là một cái người mentor rất nhiều học sinh mà nhiều volunteer có bằng master về speech therapy audiology về ABA therapy psychology vâng vâng rất nhiều nghề thì chưa thấy là chưa lì hân hạnh được uh, mentor nhiều học sinh mà giống như hôm nay á thì mình thấy là Colin có thời gian để cho giúp nhiều người hơn Colin um, as we go to commercial break um, how did I want to ask you just briefly how did your parents support you in the process my parents were very supportive my parents even helped me I got into a grad school out of state and so my parents even flew me out and helped me wow well, thank you so much, Colin, for sharing your journey after the commercial break. We'll definitely continue our conversation. Uh, Julie, cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV. Hôm nay mình có thời gian nói chuyện về May Better Speech and Hearing Month. Sau vòng quảng cáo, chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard, Clinical Director of OC Autism. Chương trình này được bảo trợ bởi Family Joy tổ ấm y tế của mọi gia đình 
Hi, welcome back to the OC Health and Education Show. I'm your host, Julie Yip. Today we're talking about May Better Speech and Hearing Month. It's a, it's a month that's so important to, to me as a speech language pathologist, but also more importantly, for you to understand the scope of practice. What does a speech pathologist do and how do speech pathologists help people in the community? So Colin, I know as a speech language pathologist, I've done this for 25 years, I can't imagine not, I mean, do, I mean, can't imagine doing anything else. I really love my job. Um, you know, when someone sees me work, it just seems like I'm playing with kids all day. When I have a, an adult with a stroke or brain injury, I get to connect with them and give them hope again. So that's what inspires me to continue to do what I do. I want to ask you, Colin, um, is there a story or a patient that really keeps you going when sometimes it seems very hard to, to do what we do? I enjoy uh, serving God through serving others. I enjoy being able to, you know, help a child be able to speak clearly so that, you know, the child can be better understood by the other children on the playground and the classroom. You I, know, a lot of times, Colin, what I enjoy when I watch you working is that you get a little silly with the kids. I, I see you put hand puppets on and pop in at, at all of our therapy rooms. I think I really see your personality shine when you're with kids. What makes it hap what, what makes it exciting for you when you're working with these children? I love finding their different senses of humor, what they find funny, what you know amuses them, and it helps them also be more at ease, make them more comfortable being there, and it makes it more rewarding for them so that they're not just going through a series of you know more home like more homework for them. Right. Now, so as a speech pathologist, um, what kind of things do you do? What do you work on? We work on helping children be better understood. We help people with... Just to speak more uh, clearly. So we're working articulation. And I think with strokes and brain injury, the muscles are weak, right? Helping, so we retrain those muscles. Retrain the muscles, helping people with cognition in terms of problem solving, helping with memory, because sometimes after a stroke, you know, they have difficulty recalling. Um, even recalling sometimes family members' names, and so it's helping them with that, helping them reconnect. Yeah, because I think a lot, we were talking during the commercial break that it's called, you know, cerebral dysfunction. So sometimes, right. you know, the brain gets impacted as far as even mental health. When someone has anxiety or depression, their ability to perform what we call executive functioning, which is organizing, planning, that's all impacted. A lot of times people don't think that speech pathologists are actually medical professionals. I purposely wore this white coat today to remind people that, you know, a lot of times, even though we play on the floor with the kids, we have to make sure that therapy is more enjoyable, that they're, they don't know that we're working on building the communication pathways, the neurons, the dendrites, kind of rebuilding the, the pathways in the brain. So I want to remind everybody that, you know, the field of speech pathology is very technical and it's just not all fun and play, but you make it look like fun and play. We make it look like fun and play, in the case with adults, make it, you know, find what they enjoy so that not only they get more out of it, but it means more to them. Yeah, and it's more that. motivating, it's right? It's more motivating, you know, nobody wants to work on something that doesn't have meaning to them, doesn't have significance. Right, right. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for always making the kids laugh and making me laugh. I know in the office we have so much fun with each other, and I think that's what it is, is establishing the relationship with your coworkers, and that's what makes a really good clinical director, too, but also establishing relationship and the trust with the families. Thưa quý vị, hôm nay Julie có thời gian nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard trong nghề nghiệp của cô của mình là âm ngữ trị liệu là rất là um, giúp nhiều người, giúp mấy trẻ em bị chậm phát triển mà cũng giúp mấy ông bà bị uh, tai biến bại máu não hoặc có bị tâm bệnh. Tại nhiều người nghĩ rất là uh, speech therapy là chỉ chỉnh âm thôi mà thiệt ra speech therapist giúp rất nhiều uh, cái um, scope of practice khác. Giống như Colin nói đó là mình làm sao cho cái cơ miệng nó mạnh hơn. Chừng nào ai bị stroke, cái người nào người, người cao niên bị stroke thì cái miệng có thể bị méo, hoặc mình ăn uống nó nó bị nhiều nước miếng, hoặc bị ăn bị sặc. Lúc đó mình phải còn người speech pathologist mình lại phải chỉnh cho cái um, cái cơ miệng về cái um, cái muscle nó mạnh hơn. So cái phần speech therapy là về nó kêu bằng building communication pathways. Mình làm sao cho cái bộ não của mình nó tạo ra nhiều cái dây thần kinh để cho nói chuyện với nhà nhà nước thức ăn hơn. So I just want to remind everybody that you know our field is so technical, but you know when we work with children, we're always on the floor. You know, so um, I love um, working with children and I've done it for 25 years, Colin. In the office, there's so many toys, but oftentimes it's toys for us, not for the kids. Well, we get a kick out of it too. We, <laughs> we have our fun moments with them What's too. your favorite toy in the clinic? Oh, I enjoy 
like you mentioned earlier, the hand puppets, those have been fun, you know, playing with those. Or lately, we also have toys that repeat what you say. I enjoy right. messing right. with coworkers that way. <laughs> How did the kids respond when you're doing this? Some of them were at first um, mystified or taken aback, but some of them started to enjoy it and play with it. And it helped them open up more. They, In fact, some of them, the ones I didn't think would get such a kick out of it, enjoyed it and started to even play on their own with it. Right. And so that, that's what I was wanting to segue over. It's the reinforcement. In order to be a good therapist, you really have to be a cheerleader of sorts for these kids. Because really, when you hear the word therapy, nobody wants to go to therapy, mm. right? But you really want to be that person where the kids or the patients look forward to seeing. Because I know a lot of kids always want to see you. And they, they, they want to always go to therapy. Sometimes it's difficult keeping them and sometimes the they don't want to go home. We're wait, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're trying to switch clients. It's difficult getting them to wait. I love it when the kids cry because they have to go home. Yeah. Right? And Which is, it's what counterintuitive is for what people would think. Right, because I know in the beginning they cry when they see us. Oh, yeah. But at the end they're crying because they have to leave us. Yeah. You know, so, but I think that's really important, Colin, that, you know, you've, you've grown so so much as a, as, a, as a volunteer to a student to um, an intern and now you get to be this clinical director. How does it feel to get to this level and this point in your career? All through the levels that it's surprising to me. It's amazing to look how far I've come. And I'm, again, thank God for that. I thank you, know, you for the opportunities. I thank you, mom and dad. Um, well, I, I heard that your dad says you have a face for radio. Yeah, but <laughs> dad says I have a face for radio. I'm here to prove him wrong. I, you know, Colin, I really think you're an amazing person. I, I really love that, you know, when you work, you have so much heart in helping the families. And, you know, at, at, at OC Autism, we're not just there to help the children. We really treat the families and we advocate so much to make sure that so many families get other services. What are some of the other services that you have um, advocate for, for your patients or some of the reports you have to do? to help them get additional programming. Sometimes when, even when we're working on, you know, we find out the child needs additional help and has difficulty with feeding. So we address that. We've also mentioned to families that, you know, they might benefit, their child might benefit from behavioral therapy mm -hmm. or occupational or physical therapy. And also devices. Devices, yeah. um, because sometimes those devices help them with accessing more than right. the child has currently. Because I know that you, recently you had to write a report and um, advocate for the California phones because May is Better Speech and Hearing Month. It's also about communication but also realizing that California phones have so many equipments free that, to, that are free to the community. So I hope that the community will uh, go on California phones and, and Google that and realize that you know if you have a, a, an adult or family that's hard of hearing, they can actually access those, those, those devices. You know when we pay those um, surcharges or those taxes or whatever we pay for the cell phone, that's what it pays for. So thank you so much, Colin, for being here and also for sharing all the great things that you're doing for the thank community. You. Um, Julie Moon, I hope you know that I was better speech and hearing month. I want to remind you that if you have người trong gia đình của mình có nặng tai chút mà khó nghe đó thì cũng có mình mình sẽ lên website mình lên California phones mình Google nó có rất nhiều điện thoại miễn phí cho mình. Julie nghĩ cũng có là cái cell phone miễn phí cho nào nó làm cái âm thanh nó 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 lớn hơn cho mình dễ nghe hay chừng nào có ai nặng tay thì sometimes nó có cái đèn nên nó chớp chớp thì mình thấy là có ai gọi um, chừng nào khi mình có người cao niên um, không có nhớ được thì cũng có cái hình hình nhẫn là mình mình bấm số cũng được thì sau phần quảng cáo chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard về Better Speech and Hearing mình cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV chương trình này được bảo trợ bởi Family Joy tổ ấm y tế của mọi gia đình 714 898 0765. Hi, welcome back to the OC Health and Education Show on Little Saigon TV. I'm your host, Julie Yip. We're going to continue our conversation for May Better Speech and Hearing Month and learn from Colin Hubbard, the clinical director over at, at OC Autism, to learn about what speech therapy does. So, Colin, I know that at OC Autism, the mentorship program and the volunteer program that you were able to participate in as a student has helped you become um, you know, successful in the field and get to this point. Can you tell me a little bit more of what you do on 
on a day-to-day -day basis on the programs and service that, that you provide? In speech therapy, we do one-on-one -on -one skills training. We also have group sessions for functional and practical application oh. for the clients communicating with each other. Because um, you know, like when, when, the, when, when the child doesn't know how to speak, the one-on-one -on -one therapy teach them the sounds and the words. But then the group therapy, I think a lot of times we call it friendship club. Friendship club, they learn social skills, they learn the ap application it makes more, more fun for them than even just playing. They get bored even of just spending time with us sometimes. Right. And they enjoy having peers and they get to play with friends and then they get to the application, they make those connections with their, peer, their peers, their friends. Yes, because I know in addition to working with the children, you also specialize in working with adults with autism. Can you tell me what that looks like and what are some of the skills that you're training? We've been helping them with employment, helping them with self-advocacy. We help ah. them with also... Like in independent, living independent living skills too, I know. Independent living skills, learning, helping them with um, seeking out different services they may need at uh, the college level. We have a lot of college students and we help them with self-advocacy there speaking up for their needs. Well, I'm glad that you remind everybody that speech therapy is not just only about working with the young kids or the, the toddlers, no. but it's really working through the lifespan. And I think yeah. that's very important. Um, lúc mà quý vị nghe về speech therapy nhiều lúc mình nghĩ là chỉnh âm thanh thôi mà giống như Colin nói đó là speech therapy làm rất nhiều chương trình có rất nhiều dịch vụ giúp cho 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 cộng đồng của mình trước nhất là về trẻ em thì mình làm one on one therapy là individual therapy cho dạy về cái kỹ năng mà em không có có thể là không có biết phát âm hoặc không có có chữ về về nói chuyện thì lúc nhiều nhiều lúc đó mấy em bị uh, tantrum la hét hay đánh nhiều sau đó thì uh, Colin nói đó là mấy em mà lớn tuổi là teenager hoặc học college thì Colin cũng có một cái nhóm là kêu bằng friendship club tạo cho cái um, nhiều cái câu hỏi để cho mấy em uh, nói chuyện nhau tập về cái kỹ năng mà đang học trong individual therapy mà mình thấy rất là quan trọng nhất á, là mình tạo làm sao mấy em mà lớn có tư kỷ có thể tự, tự sống um, like independent living có thể có nhiều cái khả năng để cho làm tìm công ăn việc làm và cũng có khả năng đi học đại học trong cái nhóm của của Colin á, và dạy group therapy á, có mấy em đang học bằng bachelor có mấy em đang học đại học có mấy em cũng có adult adult um, program so có rất nhiều em um, có khả năng khác nhau mà cũng được học trong cái nhóm đây là mình tạo ra rất nhiều friendship. Um, you know, Colin, I was just saying that you know a lot of the kids really enjoy um, getting to know each other. I think when we started, a lot of the kids and even the parents were kind of reluctant. Why would I go from individual therapy to group therapy? Because they think that individual therapy is better, getting that one-on-one -on -one attention. How can you convince parents that you know when our kids have the communication skills to now interact with others, that group therapy is so important. The individual gives them a good foundation, like you mentioned earlier, gives them the sounds, the words, and so forth. But when they have group, they make friends, and they find ways to use it that right. much more. And when they have individual, they get to a certain level where they're not progressing as much as they could, and that's right. when they need the group. They need to spend time with peers because it makes more meaning for them than just you know, us teaching it to them. Because when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's usually just teaching. Yes. And, they, and if they can do it with me, that's fine. But I want to see them, you know, extend it to other, you know... Other situations, other people, other something situations, more natural. Other friends, you know, right. with their friends. And then it has more meaning for them. They go, oh, this is why I've been doing this. They understand... The point of well, it in the field of speech therapy and ABA, we talk a lot about carryover and generalization. I think a lot of times our kids, when they when we work on one-on-one, -on -one, they only know how to talk to an adult or to a therapist, prompted. But I think when they have the opportunity to interact with their friends, it becomes natural contingency, meaning that in a natural environment, now they know when to apply it and when to utilize yes. it. So I think that's very important, Colin, that, yeah. you know, you know, you and I, we're always big on individual therapy. But when the when our kids started plateauing and we realized that they really need the individual, the, the group program. And I think that was really hard because a lot of times our parents didn't understand why we were yeah. Telling them to be in a and group program. Group doesn't mean that, you know, they're not losing, they may be losing, quote unquote, individual intention, but it doesn't mean they're not being prioritized. They're right. still being prioritized. In fact, it helps them so much more. And learning from their peer models, I think that's yeah. very important. And it's nice to have the peer models too, because sometimes a peer can give a, in 
indirect better model than even we as therapists could think of because you can go, hey, look at how so and so is doing it, you know, and then they go, and then they start to make the connection. They start to see, okay, and then realize that it's not just the therapist who's expecting it, but other people are going to, in their friends group, will be doing the same thing, and they all be able to work together. Yeah, I, I mean, I take I get so much pride in watching them build real friendship. And more importantly, when, as a parents are waiting in the lobby, our parents are becoming friends too. Our, and it becomes this, this opportunity for a natural group therapy outside and Some, a support group. Sometimes even in the lobby, we have, you know, clients are interacting with each other already. Right, and right. And it's just building off of that and seeing the natural interaction. And then also when they make play dates and get together outside, outside of, the, of therapy. Yeah. That's Outside amazing. Our... Well, thanks, Colin, for, for sharing that. And, you know, um, just reminding everybody that speech therapy goes beyond communication. It goes beyond just articulation. But it really helps in building connections to others. Um, so, um, thưa quý vị, hôm nay Julie có thời gian nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard. Mình chỉ thấy đó là lúc mà mình, mình để speech therapy thường thường, mỗi phụ huynh muốn là one-on-one -on -one therapy. One-on-one -on -one therapy rất là quan trọng. Chừng nào mấy em của mình không có phát triển, không có nói chuyện, để chậm phát triển lắm, thì mình phải cần cái cái one-on-one -on -one therapy để cho em tạo được mấy cái kỹ năng nói chuyện về phát âm. Sau đó rồi, thì phải quan trọng đó là mình phải có tìm cái, cái speech therapy group program mà nó à, phù hợp cho cho gia đình, để cho mấy em nó kết bạn được. Lúc mà mình có cái câu hỏi để cho nó kêu bằng là oh, generalization or carryover, là mấy cái kỹ năng mà em học rồi, thì bây giờ áp dụng về trong cái thời gian mình chơi với với bạn khác, hay nói chuyện với bạn, thì Julie thấy là rất quan trọng. Um, uh, Colin nói đó là lúc mà Colin uh, dạy mấy em đây, thì chừng nào em nói chuyện với với với, với bạn, thì họ, họ thấy họ vui hơn. Tại sometimes mình dạy người lớn, mình dạy là mình therapist, em nó cũng cũng chịu nghe lời mà nó không có vui bằng nó nói chuyện với bạn. And then chừng nào có cái group therapy, bạn có cái thời gian làm mẫu là làm cái model cho em nói chuyện làm sao để cho phát triển nên mình chưa lại thấy đó là trong cái thời gian mình dạy group therapy, mình thấy nhiều gia đình cũng kết bạn nhau sau giống mấy cái phụ huynh ngồi trong lobby cho waiting room cũng kết bạn nhau mà thấy vui nhất á, là mấy em đây có um, gặp nhau outside of therapy. Um, schedule a good date, good, good play date, judge on the Julie Taylor and Dr. Vui. Um, you know, Colin, I am such a proponent about individual therapy, especially when our kids don't have the, the, the core skills. But when our kids are getting these foundational skills to now build the friendship and establish and grow these friendships, I think it's really important that we, we also nudge them, as I did nudge you when when your clinical skills. As soon yes. as you get good enough, I make it a little harder and and, and give you more, more uh, responsibilities. So tell me, Colin, um, what does um, therapy mean to you as, as it relates to speech therapy? How does it help people? Helping other people, helping people better themselves, helping gain a solid foundation. You mm. know, sometimes we need to regroup. Sometimes we're struggling and we just need to reach out. Yeah. And, no and, and I hope that everybody, when they watch this show, that they realize that speech therapy is so much more than just basic communication, the verbal communication, but it's also about find, finding a support system and and having positive self-talk. So after the commercial break, um, we'll continue our conversation, Colin. But thank you so much for um, watching our show today and to learn more about the field of speech therapy and to celebrate May Better Speech and Hearing Month. Come on, Kavi, Kenya, go Little Saigon TV. Chương trình này được bảo trợ bởi Family Joy tổ ấm y tế của mọi gia đình 714 898 0765. Hi, welcome back to the OC Health and Education Program. I'm your host, Julie Yip. Today, we're able to talk about May, Better Speech and Hearing Month, but May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. You know, as you know, as a speech language pathologist, we work with people with communication deficits, feeding and swallowing disorders, as well as cerebral dysfunction that can include mental health dis uh, disorders such as anxiety, depression, in addition to brain injury. Uh, so today, we're here to talk to Colin Hubbard, who, is, uh, who has been here to talk about uh, the importance of communication but also to learn a lot more about the field of speech therapy. Colin, I know that you've been a speech pathologist and you have to be very serious in this role and, and help so many people that are in need. But I want to ask you, what is the um, experience with OC Autism that really makes you happy, that makes you uh, more motivated to continue to do what you do? I enjoyed, when I volunteered, I enjoyed a lot being 
the mascot, Austin the monkey, it was enjoyable. You get to interact with all the people and the children, you know, find it such a, you know, they it's find not it more just the children. I think even the parents the adults, get so you know, excited. A lot of people like giving you high fives, you know, people with the thumbs up. People, it brings out more joy in people when they see a mascot and instead of interacting with just a therapist or an adult. Because I know the last time when we did um, a fundraiser, a bike ride with the Punishers group, um, they, I mean, these men are just tough looking and they're just so excited to see the, the monkey. To, yeah, very excited <laughs> to see the monkey posing with the monkey. Right. You know, making goofy faces. And so what are some of the events that you, you volunteered um, with OC Autism throughout the community? Than, uh, the Punishers event. We've also had the Breakfast with Santa event. We've done Mardi Gras. We've had a gala. Uh, we've done... Light it, up festival, blue. light it up blue. Yeah, there's so, so many, many events, and even yeah. like the Moon Festival, right? Moon festival. So we've been always bringing out the monkey out there, and I think that's one thing about it is, you know, speech therapy and communication is so important. But sometimes communication goes beyond words. I know the monkey doesn't speak in costume, right? Yeah, Austin is nonverbal, <laughs> so he has to primarily communicate through gestures. So he's always doing lots of waving, thumbs up, uh -huh. ways to show, to reach out to people. But it shows that he still can. Yeah, and I know we were uh, during talking during the commercial break that sometimes when someone has anxiety or depression, there's a lot of withdrawal. So what does how does that impact communication, Colin, with the mental health aspect? When someone has a mental health going on, they tend to withdraw. They tend mm. to re refrain from going out. They don't connect with people, even with their own close family or friends. They may okay. shut down, and they don't. Not only do they not reach out about what are their needs, but they don't even reach out about their basic needs in terms of right. not just mental health, but even everyday living. Yeah, because I know I always tell people that, you know, a speech pathologist, importantly, not just teaching you to talk to other people, but as a case of mental health, is what are the type of words that you use for yourself and when you communicate to yourself? Help, I think that's very important. Helping people with self-talk, helping people with how they view themselves. Yeah. And I know one of the things that we do, especially as it relates to mental health, is helping pa patients with cognitive linguistic skills. That's executive functioning, organizing, planning. Um, you know, a lot of times when someone's unwell, they're not drinking water, which is your brain is mostly water. They're not eating like you, like you and I. You always remind me to eat on time, right, with my yeah. mental health. So those are the things that we as speech pathologists also do. Reminding people of even... Uh, going for their basic needs of the eating, drinking, or basic hygiene, right. making sure that... We call it know, the ADL's to, activity of daily living. Right, making sure that those get taken care of too because when you start to go through anxiety, depression, or any mental health, even the most fundamental things start to fall short. And it's mm. not because someone is lazy, it's more because they're so overwhelmed that they start to... But that part of your brain, the frontal lobe of your brain, which is the executive functioning, it becomes dysfunctional. So a speech pathologist works on rebuilding that and making sure that the, fan, the, the person or the individual gets back to good mental health and self-care. So thank you, Colin, for, for, for uh, being here today and for t reminding everybody that a speech pathologist all to also is part of the team to help someone with um, getting back on their feet and making sure that, um, that they stay healthy. Um, typically, um, when a patient goes to speech therapy, how often do they have to see you? It can be from anywhere from one to three times a week, usually. Okay. Depending on the needs, severity. the severity, okay. their goals, and whether sometimes we usually have groups twice a week, which uh -huh. sometimes, even if it's twice a week and they're not coming three times a week, for example, they're still getting more out of it just because they're getting that time with peers. So the consistency the of coming is very important. Yes. Because I know that sometimes I have a patient who has mental difficulties and the, ch the child don't, doesn't want to come. And I, we always tell the parents, you know, even though he doesn't want to come, keep the schedule. At least just let him sit in the lobby, right? right. And eventually they, they come through. So thank you, Colin, for, for being here, for sharing all your, your, your experience with us and all the great uh, motivation to help others. Thưa quý vị, hôm nay Julie có thời gian nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard về May Better Speech and Hearing Month mà cũng là một tháng để dành cho sức khỏe tâm thần về tâm bệnh. Um, thì Julie cũng muốn nhắc nhở quý vị đó là một cái người âm ngữ trị liệu là Speech Language Pathologist không phải là giúp cho phát âm không hay về về phát triển ngôn ngữ mà thiệt ra chừng nào quý vị có um, anxiety, 
họ có depression mà cảm mà khó khăn thì có thể cái người speech pathologist cũng có thể giúp cho quý vị quý vị phải đi nên làm liên lạc bác sĩ gia đình ha bác sĩ nhi đồng thì nào mình thấy con của mình có cái khó khăn đó refer cho speech therapy uh, cái program mình 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 work on nó kêu bằng là cognitive linguistic therapy chú ý về um, executive functioning skill làm sao mình nhớ mình làm sao mình phải làm um, you know có cái problem solving phải phải nhắc nhở làm sao tại mình thấy rằng chừng nào ai mà bị tâm bệnh đó, họ quên uống nước quên ăn uống quên xúc miệng tắm rửa mấy cái đó đó là cái người âm ngữ trị liệu cũng phải giúp về memory là về cái trí nhớ so calling you know I think that memory is really hard when you don't have mental wellness and I guess maybe you get a little distracted too on the way um, so can you tell me as you get older Do you feel like your memory is slipping? And if so, are there any strategies you, you use to help yourself remember? Because I have this book always. I'm make, <laughs> I definitely find it starting to slip. <laughs> so I either write things down or I use my phone a lot, yeah. use the calendar, and it helps me with planning out, you know, making sure my I don't overbook or I plan things right. out and have the right time and know where I need to be. Yeah, because you know, that's the reason is I want to segue over that, you know, in addition to working with children, we work with seniors. And mm -hmm. especially now that, you know, um, there's going to be a booming, you know, population of seniors who's going to need our help in the future. I want the, this program to also highlight that we work on memory, cognitive dysfunction, and, and in addition to articulation and language and social skills. Um, what are what is one thing about speech therapy that really brings joy to you every day? And I can part of it is, you know, just seeing watching the clients, you know, laugh, you know, finding their sense of humor, also, you know, just helping them, you know, finding what their needs are and how I can best serve them, you know, you know, whether it be the children, you know, helping them with that speech clarity, being able to be understood, or with the adults, you know, helping them regain memory, being able to reconnect with their family after a stroke. Yeah, because, you know, I injury. hear you say the word serve a lot, Colin, and I know serving to you is part of your faith. There's a pin on there. Yes. Can you tell me what's the significance of that? One of the pins I brought uh, is this one. This is uh, my faith. This is West Virgin Mary with the child Jesus. And my Catholic faith is very important to me. It's shaped a lot of who I am. And it's why I believe in serving others for God, serving God, giving them what God has given me. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for being here, for sharing you know, your inspiration into, and, and also your, your road to success. I know that it wasn't easy for you, and I know you have so many angels and so many people that help you along the way. And I just want to say congratulations to all your successes and all the um, all the lives, more of the lives that you'll you'll continue to touch as you work in the field. Um, Julie, muốn cảm ơn quý vị hôm nay um, mình có thời gian nói chuyện với Colin Hubbard, đó là clinical director của, của uh, speech department um, của OC Autism. Hôm nay um, Colin chia sẻ với mình cái journey của Colin về giúp được uh, rất nhiều bệnh nhân, về mấy em, về mấy, cũng là mỗi người cao niên có cần về um, cái người âm ngữ trị liệu cái chương trình đó. Thì Julie hy vọng uh, đã quý vị hiểu thêm về cái nghề nghiệp của mình đó là speech language pathology âm ngữ trị liệu. Julie chúc quý vị rất nhiều sức khỏe và may mắn. Cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV.